Welcome to a new Radiology Bits video. Today's case is an intermediate level case. When you see the sign, please pause to think about the provided images. This is a 62-year-old female patient who presented with abdominal pain. Now to the discussion. You probably have noticed that there is a fluid collection in the pelvis with a minimal increase in density in the dependent region. The most important question to think about now is where is this fluid collected and why did it happen? To address such a question we need to understand a few things first. Let's look at this representative drawing of an axial section through the pelvic region. Let's imagine together that these are the rectus muscles, this is the urinary bladder, this is the uterus in a female patient, of course, and this is the rectum. There are a few potential spaces that surround the urinary bladder. The first encircles the urinary bladder, and the second lies in between the symphysis pubis anteriorly, the urinary bladder posteriorly, and it actually drapes on each lateral side of the bladder. There is a fascia that separates them, which is called the umbilical fascia. The brown space anteriorly is called the prevesical space. The blue space surrounding the urinary bladder is called the perivesical space. And the very famous space between the uterus and rectum is known as the Douglas pouch or the rectouterine pouch. Our concentration is going to be on the prevesical space, which has several important communications. It might communicate with the retroperitoneal space. These are the spaces above that surround the kidneys and pancreas. It could also communicate with the scrotum through the inguinal canal. Fluid in the prevesical space might extend into the lower extremities via the femoral sheath, or the anterior abdominal wall might have direct involvement by extension through the rectus sheath. So let's go back to our initial image. If this is a Foley catheter within the urinary bladder which is collapsed, this is the rectum behind the bladder, this makes the anterior abdominal finding an abnormal collection within the prevesical space. And notice the shape of this collection that fits a molar tooth appearance. This is what's known as the molar tooth sign which is a sign of extraperitoneal pelvic fluid within the prevesical space. This is another image where contrast was injected uh, through the Foley catheter, clearly showing that there is contrast extravasation from the collapsed urinary bladder into the fluid collection within the prevesical space, an appearance that is consistent with extraperitoneal urinary bladder rupture. Although our clip is not designated to provide further details on this topic, it is worth knowing that Differentiating between extraperitoneal and intraperitoneal urinary bladder rupture is an important distinction that impacts treatment. The take home point from this case is to remember that not all intraabdominal fluid is actually intraperitoneal. So don't be surprised if you see a perinephric abscess that leaks into the pelvis, a lower limb abscess ascending anteriorly to the urinary bladder or a pancreatic pseudocyst that is contained within the scrotum. Thank you for watching. Please share our videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like our clips, and join our Radiology Bits Twitter account. See you later.